Hey, hello, welcome again. It's Prosper Wong and it's Friday. For today's lesson, we're going to look at carbon and its compound. But in this case, we're going to focus on cook. In our last week lesson, remember we focused on coal, where we saw the destructive distillation of coal. We saw the products of coal, which include coke, coal tar, ammonico liquor, and coal gas. We also dived in to look at the uses of this product. We asked the question, why is it necessary to destructively distill coal? And we answered the question by looking at some uses of the destructive, the products of destructive distillation of coal. So today we're looking at coke. Let's see the objective for the day. So our first objective for the day, you should be able to explain the term gasification and you specify it to that of coke. You should also be able to describe the production of fuel gases by gasification of coke. And lastly, you should be able to state the uses of fuel gases. Now, fuel gases does not mean the fuel you use in your cars. So hold on and let us see what fuel gases actually mean. So what is gasification? Let's look at the first thing the term gasification, what does it mean? Of course, the word gasification should give you a hint as to what this means. Now, from what we have in the screen, you say gasification is a process that converts organic or fossil fuel-based carbon carbonaceous materials into carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. But the two most important gases that are formed in the process is carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Now we're told that this is achieved by reacting the material at high temperature, let's say at temperatures above 700 degrees Celsius without combustion. Now this tells us there is a condition for reaction. In chemistry, the condition for a particular, the conditions at which you subject a particular particular reactant will determine the product you get at the end of the day. I think it also applies to life. The conditions that affect you determine your pro what your output may be. So, but it is more evident in chemistry the condition at which you carry out the reaction will determine the product you get. So now we're told here without combustion, in other words, without burning, with a controlled amount of oxygen or steam. So what do you do? You have the carbonaceous material, and then you pass oxygen or st steam to this carbonaceous material, and you get hydrogen or carbon monoxide and other mixture of gases you could get carbon dioxide methane and the rest of it so the product you get at the end of the day is called syn syn gas or from the term or from this phrase synthesis gas now synthesis gas because this the gas is produced at the end of the day is used in the production of other substances it is used in the synthesis of other substances so we call it syn syn gas or producer gas in this case and it it can be used as a fuel on its own because it contains carbon monoxide and hydrogen so here is also a simple setup as to how this can be done we're not going to be using this setup this is a little bit complex we're going to be going we'll go for the basis and then as you advance in chemistry you're going to set up like this and understand it better so what are fuel gases fuel gases are, are fuel <laughs> or gases Gases that could be used as fuel gotten from passing either steam or air to red hot coal. So we're told that industrially producer and water gas, they are the two major fuel gases that are obtained from this process, are made in the same plant known as producer by passing air and steam. Alternatively, not at the same time, through heated coal. The heat generated when producer gas is formed is sufficient for water gas formation. All right so how is producer gas what do we need to know about producer gas we were told that producer gas is a mixture of nitrogen and carbon dioxide what you need to know this is chemistry so the chemical equation we have here is really important so you should need to know okay the oxygen and nitrogen we have here is coming from air now we told you remember that air is made up of majorly oxygen and nitrogen with nitrogen um, having a percentage constraint of composition of about 78 percent oxygen with 21 or 20 depending on the textbook so the nitrogen and oxygen is passed through red hot coke and what we have here produced is carbon monoxide and nitrogen so these two together is called the producer gas so i repeat oxygen and nitrogen comes from air being passed through carbon 
you get carbon monoxide and nitrogen gas so a mixture of carbon monoxide and nitrogen gas and uh, in the ratio 2 is to 1 is referred to as a producer gas now let's go to the next one water gas now in the case of water gas you need to pass in steam so here we have water and it is represented with G meaning steam so water is passed through coke which is solid at 1000 degrees Celsius and we get carbon monoxide and hydrogen in the ratio 1 is to 1 so a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen the ratio 1 is to 1 is referred to as water gas now let me use this diagram to explain how this happens now firstly you pass air the first thing that happens is since the, the production of producer gas is exothermic you have you pass in air to cook and you have producer gas coming out of this place being produced right here and when you're done with this since the process is exothermic it generates a lot of heat that gives us about 1000 degrees celsius so when you're done with this alternatively you pass in steam to cook and you get water gas produced from this point so you pass in this air we have here into this producer it goes to the cook and gives us producer gas which is a mixture of carbon monoxide and nitrogen and alternatively you pass in steam which is water in its gaseous state to cook and then you get water gas now the most important thing i repeat is the chemical equation you should know the chemical equation for this process so what are the uses of this fuel gas let's start with the producer gas now the first thing you see, producer gas is widely used to heat furnaces, retorts, and lime clean. It is also a source of nitrogen for the manufacture of ammonia. Now to manufacture ammonia, we, we, carry, out, we carry out the production of man, ammonia using a process known as the Haber process. So producer gas is used as an industrial fuel and it's also used as a source of nitrogen for producing ammonia. We all know that ammonia is an important, an important chemical in the field of chemistry. Now for water gas, water gas on the other hand contains hydrogen and carbon monoxide and it is also used as an industrial fuel. Now we are told that here, however, it has too high a carbon monoxide content for domestic use. Now the next aspect of water gas, it is an important source of hydrogen and other organic compounds. Now in the Haber process, the Haber process uses hydrogen and nitrogen to produce ammonia. So nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to give us ammonia. So it tells us that water gas could be a very important source of hydrogen which is used with the nitrogen produced from the producer gas to give us ammonia. And we're also told that it is an important source of other compounds. So let's proceed. Critical thinking, let us think a bit. Let us see. Our first question is why is water gas a more efficient fuel to produce gas? So if you don't pause the video, go back, look at the chemical equation and think about it carefully. Why is water gas a more efficient fuel than producer gas? The next critical thinking question is what is the implication of using water gas as a domestic fuel? We're told that water gas it cannot be used as a domestic fuel. So what will be the implication if I decide to use water gas as a domestic fuel? Go back to the equation, go back to the video. If you don't understand what we've discussed so far, go back to it. Look at the video again and try to understand the implication or bring out an implication um, of using water gas as a domestic fuel. So if you have an answer to this question, please you comment in the video in the Google Classroom. So I repeat, if you have answers to this critical thinking question, just comment on the video posted in the Google Classroom. And if you have any other question, you ask when we get to our Zoom class, any question at all in regards to what we've treated so far, you could come to the group, um, Zoom class and ask your question and I'll be there to attend to you and answer all of your questions as God gives me grace. So thank you very much for watching and remember stay safe, wash your hands and observe social distancing. Do have a nice day.